the promise of your Son, that which your Spirit gathered together in this name, he is with them. Through this holy Eucharist we celebrate. Make us worthy to sit at his table in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. May we feed on the bread of life no more. 
much in hunger. May we have a share in the offering of Jesus on the cross. May we who fill our lives with your ideals join with you in the supper of the Lord. May we perceive always and everywhere your all-pervading presence. May we end our days with your holy name in our hearts and on our lips. Forgive our sins, O God. Cleanse and renew our hearts. Bless, Lord, bless us with the wisdom we praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Please now, my brothers and sisters, make a quiet examination of your consciences at this time, and with the sorrow in your heart for those sins which you have committed, and fill, filled with the resolve to sin no more, I ask you now to confess your sins quietly at this time to God. Now please say with me the confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, with the one with, who knows the innermost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. By my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. In your presence, O oh God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins by which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, endeavoring henceforth to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I ask all those who dwell within the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived, suffered, and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with this authority vested in me, I do absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Father, that with purity of heart we may worthily fulfill this holy action established in the remembrance of the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said that where two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. I also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy we may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. Let us pray. Now, let us rise and let us be glorious.
you chose humble shepherds as the first witnesses of his incarnation. As we honor them, may we continue to proclaim his presence among us. We ask this of the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, once again, good morning to you. Good morning. And good morning to all those who are watching today's Holy Mass as it's being a video uh, recorded and will appear on YouTube later. Uh, today, we celebrate the Feast of the Humble Shepherds. This solemnity in the Polish National Catholic Church is one of four that are special to our church, along with the Feast of uh, the uh, uh, Humpa, the Feast of the, um, uh, the Christian Family, the Feast of Brotherly Love. Uh, we we celebrate these feast days because they remind us in a special way of our obligations to uh, our church and to our Lord calls us to discipleship with him. Uh, it is a discipleship that is sometimes not very easy. Today is also the feast day. We are commemorating the day, uh, though, of St. Stephen, who proclaiming the love of God and proclaiming uh, his teaching became the very first martyr of the church because he was stoned to death for what he had, did, uh, had done, uh, which is a glorified God, Jesus Christ, who he knew was God. And uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, and the people of uh, Jerusalem, they took stones and they stoned him to death. And, the, and his, uh, his murder was approved by Paul. St. Paul who was Saul at the time. <clears throat> and we hear, we hear today's letter, <coughs> the second reading, that Paul writes to Titus, and he's proclaiming the glory of God, this very God who he himself had, had uh, uh, persecuted <coughs> through his church and through his people. We see, we see the words of uh, the, uh, uh, we see the words of the second uh, reading uh, to Titus, where, where this man who, who had, uh, uh, who had approved of the murder of uh, St. Stephen, the, the first martyr of the church, then turns around a complete 180 degree change and says, but when the kindness and the generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of the, his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. He who began by denying Jesus then becomes his greatest proclaimer and travels on great journeys throughout the, the, the known world at that time proclaiming the gospel message of Christ. And he says, and he says as a testament of the work that God does, Many of these, many of these first lines refer back to Paul, where it says, "Not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of His mercy." Paul was not in any way, in any understanding of the form, righteous, and yet, because of His mercy, God's mercy, He saved us. He saved Paul through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, and He attributes it all to Jesus Christ, our Savior, Paul's Savior, who had richly poured out that Spirit on him and on all of us. Uh, we, as uh, good shepherds, if you will, of uh, this present day and age, are called to, to go and be in the presence of Christ as we are now in church, before him in the Holy Tabernacle, where his where his body lies, and we will soon partake of his body and his blood during this Holy Mass, so we will be communing with God as we're called to do, and then we're ha we have to take the message of the Christ, and we have to take it out into the world, which is what the shepherds did. For those of you who heard the gospel, uh, you, and you were, here, you, were, you were here yesterday during the day, you would have heard this was the same gospel, this exact same gospel is read as the Mass of the morning of Christmas. And in that gospel, uh, we heard 
that, that uh, when they were returning home, it says, then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. We know this to be true <coughs> because Mary kept all these things in her heart. And Luke, the great physician, who cared later on for Mary, wrote these things down. And if you, if you realize, the gospel that we're reading from is the gospel of Luke. So it all works together. But we are called to be those same, those same uh, shepherds. We're called to be missionaries. Even if need be, to be as, as powerful a missionary as St. Stephen. But sometimes we as ordinary people can do amazing things. Uh, when I was uh, getting uh, ready in the morning, uh, today I was listening to uh, uh, National Public Radio and they announced that Desmond Tutu had died. I don't know if you remember the name, but Desmond Tutu was an Episcopal bishop who was, uh, who died, he was 90 years old when he died. And he, uh, although he wasn't uh, in the public eye the last 20 years or so, those of us who remember, uh, remember well the, uh, the effect that he had on the apartheid in South Africa and how he fought to have Nelson Mandela freed and to have a, an end to apartheid. And he was a very simple life. I mean, he, he uh, grew up uh, in South Africa. Uh, I found out that he was married a year after I was born in 1955. He had a wife and four, four children. Uh, it's an amazing thing too because one of our current Prime uh, Bishop Emeritus, Emeritus is Bishop, Prime Bishop John Swantek, well, he met Desmond Tutu on uh, a few occasions, and he was, he always referred to him as his friend. Uh, he, I went to see my friend, and uh, Bishop Swantek right now uh, isn't doing that well uh, health-wise, but even for, even for the, uh, the in his uh, growing up, you know, in, in uh, New England and then going, uh, eventually his, his witness became that of the witness of the Prime Bishop of our church, just as Desmond Tutu, well, he grew up and eventually his witness became the witness of an Archbishop of the Episcopal Church, of the Anglican Church. And so uh, there is, we don't know what God has in store for us. It may be martyrdom. It may be, it may be uh, priesthood and, and the episcopacy. It, it may be just living a quiet, normal uh, life. Uh, but in any case, we have the opportunity wherever, wherever we find ourselves to proclaim, to witness to Jesus Christ, to his birth, and we can do it through the spirit that was placed in us the spirit that we received from God at our baptism and again at our confirmation. We are the shepherds, the good shepherds of this era. And let us proclaim uh, the, the truth about Jesus because the world as we look around sorely needs this message. The message that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever lives and believes in him Although he may, uh, although uh, will have eternal life, and and whoever lives and believes in him will never die, but have eternal life. <clears throat> it is the promise of Christmas, given to us by a little infant, born in a manger, born in a stable, in Bethlehem. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And now let us rise and let us together proclaim the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God. 
God was not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. So, token to the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yeah. 
accept our gifts that we offer, for by sharing in this Holy Eucharist, may we come to more fully live the love we profess. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Come down from heaven, 
If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. The bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And afterwards, when the temporal and messianic life of the divine teacher and giver of the covenant was drawing to a close, he gathered into the upper room all those whom he had loved in a singular way and had chosen to continue his work of salvation. He spoke to them words of deep love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. <clears throat> I am the way and the truth and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not be distressed or fearful. You will suffer in the world, but take courage. I have overcome the world. If you live in me and my words stay part of you, you may ask what you will. It will be done for you. Anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. I consecrate myself for their sakes now, that they may be consecrated in truth. That all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be complete. Father, all those you have gave me I would have in my company, where I am to see this glory of mine, which is your gift to me, because of the love you bore me before the world began. I myself am the bread of life. No one comes to me who comes to me shall ever be hungry. No one who believes in me shall ever thirst. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer of holy fervor, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given. excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, receive from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful confidence as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts, and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this, our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to, the, to your highest altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body, and blood of your Son for this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and passed on to eternity. And at this close of the uh, civil year, we remember all of the members of our Holy Trinity uh, Cathedral Parish who have died during the past year. And we remember that throughout its history, the parishioners of both Holy Cross Parish and Holy Trinity Cathedral here in Manchester. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest of Christ, grant of everlasting life, 
and to those who turn your life straight from the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten their sufferings. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some heart and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and truly give us all these good. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy 
Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing and zealous servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. shall I return to the Lord for all the graces he has given me. I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Thank you. 
receive with our lips, may we understand with our minds, and may this temporal gift become for us an everlasting healing. May your body which I have received and your blood which I have drunk cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me whom these holy sacraments have nourished, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. For the needy will never be forgotten, nor will the hope of the afflicted ever fade. Since our parish 
uh, family will not be having its Christmas dinner this year, uh, but we will be having an open house with lots of food, lots of kielbasa and kabanose and uh, perhaps a pierogi ham. There's going to be a lot of food just for you, uh, and this is something that Karen and I, well, Karen mostly, because she does all the work. I just stand around and look, you know, look like a part of it. She does everything. So we invite you for that next Sunday after the Mass. And uh, the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin. I don't know if there are any left, because after the Christmas services of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, most of the bulletins went. There were a couple there. And if you uh, don't receive them electronically, please try to take those home, because they have all the information on what the parish is doing for the week. And finally, I want to commend our choir one more time. They did such a marvelous job at the, uh, um, uh, at the choral preludes uh, concert that they gave on Christmas Eve. You can see that on YouTube. We did record it along with the Mass of Christmas Eve. You can see those on, on your computer um, today. Uh, they did a marvelous job, and uh, there were, at this point, there were at least 70 views of that uh, choir concert, which uh, is a lot better than people who watch our Mass. We get 20 to 30 on an average week to tune in on our Mass, but they doubled it for the choir. So congratulations to you, one and all. You did a marvelous job. Uh, again, the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin. We invite you for cake and coffee and Lisa's wash. And uh, Karen, if you would. Thank you.